a New York Times article exclusively about the potential of helium and the real use case for the network on February 6th and a major eight hour long blockchain outage on February 7th. The New York Times article highlighting the potential and utility of the helium network while the network outage just a day later proves there is more work to be done. Of course, a network of this size and scale with a growth trajectory as steep as helium's is, is going to face challenges. But what is a little bit concerning is that the network took proactive steps to avoid an outage just a week earlier. The outage was rather short-lived compared to the mid-November outage that lasted three days, but blockchain outages are of course still a very, very real concern. This also appears to have overshadowed the New York Times feature article as HNT has been underperforming its peers over the last week or so. Let's take a look at the details in today's video. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here in the Crypto Compound channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're having a great day. Please hit that like and subscribe on the way in if you enjoy this type of content. In today's video, we are going to be going through and discussing the major key points on this really, really impressive New York Times article, 100% dedicated to Helium and the Helium network. It is really well written. And of course, the main thing here is it is in the New York Times, which is just extremely, extremely mainstream for a crypto project like Helium. Now, with that great news also comes the blockchain halt just a day later. As you can see here, an eight-hour outage on February 7th. We will go through that. We'll go through why it's so interesting how these are related. Of course, here's the blockchain halt announcement. And what is so interesting is about nine days ago when Amir Halim was defending the actions that were taking to the protocol on the Helium network, he actually mentions that they feared a chain halting would happen if these changes weren't made. However, those changes were made and we did still experience this halt nine days later. And of course, as I'm sure a lot of you have known, this does appear to have taken a toll on the HNT price. Of course, we were above $30 for a day or two and now we are headed way down into the $27 range again right now at this very moment testing the 200 EMA. And as you can see here, let's refresh this page. We are underperforming the peers here, as you can see, up only 3% over seven days. That is a very small number compared to the other ones we can see in this cohort here. But first, guys, let's take a look here at the New York Times article. It was extremely well written and spoke very highly of Helium and really made a few very, very good points that I think is what draws a lot of people into the Helium community. And, and of course, there were a ton of tweets here on Twitter regarding this article because it is extremely, extremely impressive. Now, I'm not going to read you this article. I will link it down below. I'm not going to bore you with going through. However, I do want to mention a few of the key points that apparently Kevin Rose here was really trying to drive home. He was really making a huge, huge distinction from Helium and other cryptos because he was saying that Helium actually has a real use case that normal people can understand. He was he actually explains it as normie utility because as we know, a lot of big crypto projects, big crypto names, household names, ones that are seen on TV and stuff, they are all extremely well known. However, a lot of people disregard them because they just can't understand what they're doing or they're not even really working yet. The main criticism about a lot of huge crypto projects is that there is nothing to them. However, what he is saying in this article is that Helium is different because people can actually understand it. You can have this device in your home. You can see how it works. You can understand why it needs to be working because of all the IoT, IoT devices in people's lives today. He goes on to explain a bit about the network, how it works, Helium in general. Of course, a lot of the utility cases here, as you can see, he mentions the Victor Mousetrap Company and Lime, just as two very general examples, of course. Then after explaining the use case, he does go into the utility, which really is what drives the network, what drives the build out of the network, people putting these things in their homes, making it really, really tangible to see why people would wanna be involved in something like this. Here, Frank Mong mentioning the incentive model powered by crypto actually made sense in this case. Of course it did, as we know, the Helium network now with over 555,000 
hotspots up 65,000 over the last 30 days. Now he all he goes on to make another really important distinction between helium and other cryptocurrencies by making the point that there are other use cases other than speculation because a lot of people very often just say everything here is based on speculation and what the next person is willing to pay for it. However, he makes the distinction here saying that helium actually has utility outside of speculation because people often just acquire new hotspots in order to mine more HNT so they aren't just reliant on the actual price of HNT rising exclusively, which is very different than other mechanics behind why people speculate with cryptocurrencies. Now, it is very interesting that he goes on to, of course, explain Helium isn't perfect like many crypto projects. It exists in a regulatory gray area and users could be in for a shock if Washington decides to crack down. Now, that is very true. However, it is also extremely interesting that he says Helium isn't perfect because just a day later after this was published, we experienced our blockchain outage. As you can see here, this was the announcement on February 7th, just a day after this was published here on February 6th. Now, that is all I'm going to get into with regards to the New York Times article. The main thing is that it is getting publicity in such a mainstream news channel, which is incredible to see. This is opening the eyes to so many more people around the world. Now, let's get into the details regarding this outage. As we can see here, this was the this was the outage back in mid-November that lasted three days and then another two days, in fact. And here is the outage we just experienced. Now, guys, to really drive home the severity of this outage and the other outages, outages, I really just wanted to do this simple exercise here, which is take these five days and this one day we just experienced and divide it by the 90 days. And that gives us 6.6% of downtime over the last 90 days. Now, of course, here they do do some calculating here that says 97.91% uptime, which is a far better number than 6.6% downtime. However, they are probably using the exact hours and minutes. I am just going by simply by looking at these red days and dividing it by 90. And a 6.6% downtime is basically useless for what Helium is trying to do. They need to improve that number. That number needs to be well below 1% as in terms of blockchain outages, in my opinion, this is what Helium should be mainly focused on right now is getting the resources, getting the people, getting all of the technology and equipment upgraded to the point where there should be 100% uptime over 90 a 90 day period here on the Helium network. Of course, we are above 500,000 hotspots on the network. There's no excuse for them not contributing the resources to make this blockchain operating 100% of the time. Now, the icing on the cake here for this outage actually is what we covered in last week's video, which was the announcement which decreased the beaconing frequency and max witnesses per beacon, which Amir Halim down here explains was a cautionary move that Helium made in order to prevent the blockchain from halting, as you can see here, he says, eventually this would keep getting worse and probably lead to the chain halting. The vote would essentially be, do you want the network to keep running? Now, of course, this was nine days ago, about a week before the blockchain outage actually occurred. So it's interesting to see that they actually took preventative action to try and prevent something like this from happening. Meanwhile, it still actually happened, as we can see here. And here is the announcement in the Discord. Of course, this is when it happened yesterday around 12.56 a.m. Helium validator operators and core developers are investigating a potential chain halt. And of course, they continued to monitor this for about the next eight hours. And the validators eventually were able to get the network back online. However, this still shines a gaping hole in the Helium network. This is a huge problem that does need to be addressed and really, really needs to have resources contributed towards. Now, guys, of course, Helium is still growing extremely rapidly. It's still extremely, extremely early for Helium. But these types of blockchain outages really do need to be resolved and addressed as soon as possible to help minimize them going forward. Of course, now, I do want to shine some po more positive light here. Of course, JMF, who was responsible for some of the really, really important and most critical hips that Helium has worked through over the past few years, he here is tweeting about this article, giving thanks to a lot of people who were mentioned in the article 
Uh, and of course, just a note to the author here from the New York Times and him, of course, driving home the main point of the article, which is who would have thunk a crypto network could actually be useful in the real world. Now, guys, I wanted to leave you with this, which is one of the most interesting posts here on Twitter, which is from Maggie Philbin. Now, it is, of course, regarding the article we were just talking about. However, we were looking at the web version, and I think it is just so interesting to to really remember that th this is actually printed in the New York Times still. A lot of us, of course, aren't reading newspapers any longer, but seeing this business page here on the New York Times and the size of this article here in the paper is really, really impressive and telling, and I think it drives home a stronger message than just the news article on the web. This is a huge step forward for Helium, really opening the doors to more people, getting more people's eyes on the project and on the network. Now it is really up to Helium, the developers, and all of the community to really get together and help this network scale effectively. Guys, that is all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for being here. Please hit that like and subscribe if you have not already, but that is all I have for today's video. Please leave your comments down below. I really like to see what you guys have to say and what you guys think about what we cover here on the channel, but just like that, this video is over and I will see you next time.